I'm Sally. I'm the author of Octopus Encounter. Hi, I'm Clyde. I'm the videographer. Hi, I'm Reggie. I'm the photographer. Come on, let's go diving. In Chapter 7, Clyde, Susan faces her very first night dive. She doesn't think the reef's going to look very good in the darkness. And she also worries about the night creatures that she might see. Then her light goes out, and she's terrified. Eric grabs her secondary light and thrusts it into her hands. But she can't see much, because the light's so small. The reef really does look different through the beam of a dive light. Because water blocks light, dive lights are made to cast a very narrow beam. This helps the light pierce through the water. So the smaller the light, the less you can see. You know, divers are so concerned with light, they will often carry three lights at a time. I know that I often do. One thing light does is help us to stay together in the reef. And sometimes I use my light to signal my dive partner. I wouldn't even want to go diving at night if lights hadn't been invented. I don't think I would see much in that darkness. I have to admit that I like the reef during the day and it's because of the sunshine. A shallow reef that's full of sunlight is also full of colors. I love to focus on small things and see all the detail. When I have a strong light, whether it's from the sun or from a great dive light, then I can see so much more. And I've found that a good dive light helps me notice creatures as I move along the reef. I can stop and observe their behavior in spite of the darkness. Even during the day, I notice that you like to use your light to snoop under ledges. And I've watched you use your light to brighten up a little cave or view the true colors of one of those anemones when you're down there on the wall. I've always shined my light at the outside of a sponge and enjoyed seeing the beautiful colors. But one night, I put my dive light on the inside of a red sponge. I was amazed at how beautiful it looked when the light shone through the sides of the sponge. Why, it glowed. Then I spotted two miniature brittle stars crawling over the lumpy surface, their bodies silhouetted against the light. Wow, I wished I'd have seen that. One day, I located some very interesting caves, but I didn't go inside. I really wanted to, but I didn't have a light with me. That made me learn an important lesson. Carry a light on every dive. I even made a light of my own. I used 10 lithium ion D cells, which properly wired together, created a 12 volt power supply that would shine a long time and give a good, strong beam of light. This has helped me to find things I never would have seen without it. I can see that you are very serious about light. I remember when I purchased my first dive light, I worked very hard to be sure I knew how to operate it because I wanted to be able to use it well when I went out on the reef at night or if I happened to find those caves again. I like to see the many fish and plankton that my dive light reveals. I don't see that during the day because these creatures don't come up to the reef until it's dark. The reef is completely different at night. I like to go out after the sun sets and see the night creatures. Most of the time, I appreciate how my light helps me see all the different creatures. But one night, I remember peering into the darkness, and a shark suddenly appeared in the distance. I think I would have been happier if I hadn't seen it at all. But it's good that you did see it, because a diver is safest when he is aware of his surroundings at all times. Clyde, you know I love to visit the wall, but there's a lot less light out there in deeper water. So, you know what I like to do? Start early, before the darkness settles in. Like just after sunset, because it makes it all seem more pleasant somehow. Let's talk about some of our favorite nighttime creatures. Sally, what's one of your favorites? Squid. Why? Oh, they flash those beautiful colors at me. I don't get to see them very often, and at night they seem especially strange and beautiful. The night belongs to the crustaceans. I like to see the crabs skitter over the sand, cleaning up the reef. The channel clinging crab is one of my favorites. When it finds a treasure, it just sits and nibbles, shoveling each bite into its mouth with tiny pinchers. I love to search for sleeping fish. Many of them change colors to help hide from the predators. As soon as it starts to get dark, they put on stripes or blotches. This camouflages them in the dim light. I call this miracle putting on pajamas. The unfurling of a basket sea star is quite a welcome sight on a night dive. They look like curled up fists of tentacles during the day, but stretch out each spaghetti-like tentacle as soon as it gets dark. Then they just sit there on the end of a coral 
and filter feed. Many filter feeders are out there in force at night. Corals look like living flowers, but they're actually hungry little creatures sipping up tiny phytoplankton and zooplankton that look like dust in the sea. The best night guy is the Caribbean reef octopus. When I discover one clutching the reef or peeking from a small cave, it's always a special event for me. I've always thought of them as rather slimy, squishy creatures that ooze and slither over the reef. But once I had the nerve to actually touch one, I changed my mind. Since they have no bones, they can change shape anytime they want to. This helps them squeeze into almost any crevice. I like the way they slide across the reef, poking their arms into holes here and there. When the octopus discovers food, in a flash it tents its body and captures its prey. When light hits the octopus, it immediately tries to escape. Remember that octopus that took off across the reef trying to get away from your video light? Finally, it shot out into open water in the darkness, arms stretching out and grasping at the water. I watched them curl and uncurl, making the octopus change shape and propelling him away from the light. But I really felt scared at this point because an octopus out in open water is in real danger of being captured by a predator. At last it did head back to the reef and it changed color trying to disappear again. But that didn't work. So it squeezed itself into a small hole in the reef. And I'm still laughing as I remember how it grasped the outside of the hole with one arm and hung on. I wish I knew what that was all about. Sally, we got to see all this because of the miracle of light. God really likes light. He made sure that even in the abyss there is some light. That's amazing, isn't it? God gave many fish the ability to create their own light. Scientists call that bioluminescent light. Some creatures use bacteria to produce it, and others have photospores. Susan felt better about night diving when she realized how much a good light could help her discover the fantastic creatures, observe their behavior, and understand how God designed them to fit into the reef ecosystem. It also helped her understand why Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. Like a light, he helps us see and understand important things. His light and love make our journey through life so much better. Just like the dive light helps the diver on his journey through the reef. Susan felt like a light went on in her brain when she discovered her ability to write. Sally, please ask God to help bring light into the lives of young people who are searching. Dear Jesus, we do want to thank you for being like a light in our lives. Give young people who want to discover their special abilities and understand how to live for you a lot of light. Blast away our darkness with your light. Thank you. Quiz time. Name as many of these creatures as you can. What situation are you facing that makes you feel like you're walking in a dark place? How does having more light help your life? How do you think God makes your life full of light?